Hello orchestra class, this is Dr. Cespedes. Today is April 14th of 2020. Uh, this will be, I believe, our orchestra online class number five. So we're moving forward in our topics and our practicing. I hope you are picking up. I'm really excited to uh, discuss this week's topic based on Beethoven. Uh, Beethoven, a great composer, who we're going to be playing and discussing some of uh, his works. Alright, so let's go right into our lesson plan for this week. And let me show you our lesson plan. Starts with a welcome orchestra page, as you can see. Then uh, important information that you have been getting from me on how to get instruments. Make sure to have your music available and pencils on your music stand or whatever you're practicing just to take some notes. <clears throat> Our learning goal has been to identify significant information about composers. We define the term composer. We kind of make a short list of composers so far. Uh, we have Alan Silvestri, we have Tchaikovsky, we have John Williams and today we'll be adding uh, Ludwig van Beethoven. So we can probably identify uh, level 3 in our objectives, uh, identify significant information about composers and musical works. Focus today's lesson on listening and practice Ode to Joy by Beethoven. And who was Beethoven? We'll discuss a little bit more of, uh, of this on Thursday where we have our formal lesson for this type of topics. And something I can tell you is that orchestras and musicians around the world are celebrating Beethoven's 250th anniversary of his birth. Um, it's sad that because of the current situation, orchestras cannot gather to play concerts. Uh, just like we cannot play our spring concert, but maybe we can start recording our videos. And uh, if you submit your video, I think some of you already did, of Beethoven, Ode to Joy, we can create a mega orchestra. I hope I can do it. Today's composer, Ludwig van Beethoven. I have some musical examples for us to listen. And uh, it's Beethoven Symphony Number no. 5. Beethoven equals to abrupt dynamic changes or changes or mood. If you talk about Beethoven, you talk about piano and then forte and then piano. Really contrasting dynamics. Remember, dynamic is how loud or soft the music goes. Same with Beethoven's character. At to some point, to understand a composer's way of composing, you have to understand his character, and that gets portrayed into the music. The second example is, uh, of course, Ode to Joy from Symphony Number no. 9. <clears throat> and I want you to listen to this fun video. It's a flash mob. <laughs> and you'll be able to understand what that is once you hear the video. Following um, some tuning videos, and I encourage you to email me to do, uh, if you're unable to tune, some of you are, um, are meeting on a regular basis on big blue button for about 10 to 15 minutes to help you tune. So if you need help, make sure to email me. I'm here to help all the time. Uh, some reviews of left, left, hand, hand, uh, left and right hand that I can give you feedback if you send me your videos. <clears throat> Most of you have been emailing me the videos, that's okay. Some of you are actually sending the videos through Canvas, which is also okay, as long as you send something. And here is our uh, two assignments for this week. And this includes students from fourth and fifth grade. Remember to use smart music. If not, uh, make sure to understand. I provided you with this music at the beginning of uh, this semester, starting in January. So you should have all to joy in your orchestra music. And it's number 124. Now, the two assignments include playing all to joy and of course send me a video so I can give you feedback. Number two, choose one of the following questions and send your response to me through email or Canvas. We have three questions for you to respond. They are really uh, good questions, research questions, and you're gonna really enjoy it. 
Now I have extra credit for the extra super achievers I have in my class. Uh, I have a lot. Extra credit, listen to Beethoven's string quartet number 15, opus 132, third movement. Now this is the Danish string quartet. It's one of my favorite string quartets right now and they play this beautifully. Why did I choose this uh, string quartet as extra credit? Some people say, I happen to agree, that in order to understand a composer's uh, language, mind, you must research their chamber music. Why? Because chamber music, or in this case quartet music, includes only four instruments. Look, a quartet, we have one, two, violins, one viola, one cello, is the, practically is the basis of the music composition, four voices. So within four voices, what is the composer saying? You can understand better. You can go into a really deep and personal level with the composer. That's why I put this extra credit. And you have to respond to this simple question. What do you notice about this piece of music? There is so much to talk about this. This could be my favorite music ever written. I'm not exaggerating. I love this string quartet and you will if you do the extra credit. I highly encourage you to do. And of course, closing questions. You can always email me to my ocps.net account. I'll be able to provide you with a lot of information, feedback on videos. Make sure to uh, send me your questions, send me your videos. This gets added to your weekly assignment grade on Skyward. So make sure to understand I'm following up with Skyward on a weekly basis. So please send me your, uh, your videos, all right? Thank you so much. Uh, it's always great to see all of you. I cannot wait to see you in person, but in the meantime, enjoy these tutorials and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.